Hey everyone! Hi. Happy, happy Easter! Happy Easter! We hope you've uh, enjoyed this first uh, very strange Easter online. Managed to get chocolate somehow. Yeah, to maybe your house. you got chocolate eggs if you've got children in your house, or maybe <laughs> without children as well. Maybe you just wanted some chocolate. Definitely. Um, it's been an interesting <laughs> week. Uh, we know for some the extension of the MCO will have brought a sigh of relief. For others, it will have increased the the mm. challenges that we're facing. And uh, we want you to know that we're praying for you. Yeah. In fact, um, there's actually a gathering every day, 6.30 to 6.45. Uh, we gather online uh, for a very quick prayer meeting on Zoom every day. It's fun and, and uh, it's so refreshing. Honestly, often it's the, like the highlight of my day. Yeah, it's and, so nice. and if you want to join in that, just uh, let your Connect group leader know and they'll add you to the prayer force whatsapp group mm -hmm. and uh we just uh we gather through that to pray every day yeah um and uh we're going to be looking at the passage that miles preached at today uh on easter sunday which is luke chapter 24 verses 36 through to 49 and if you've got any questions put a little question mark by it especially like if you've if you've got it written out or like whatever or printed out question mark for questions exclamation mark for stuff that stood out to you and an mm. arrow for anything that you can apply to your life but before we read it, I just want to give some dis, uh, some kind of context because uh, at this moment, this is after uh, the cross and there's been first reports of Jesus' uh, uh, return, his being risen from the grave. And the disciples are isolating, uh, they're hiding in fear. And Jesus appears right in their midst. Mm. And that's what we're praying for you tonight, yeah. that as we read his word, Jesus would appear to you, that he'd make himself known to you, that you'd encounter his presence as we read his word together uh, and stand amongst us. Even though we're not uh, together, uh, in him we can be uh, present uh, yeah. together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. No. I'm theologically all over the place. What day is it? It's been a long day. A long day. <laughs> it's been okay. a long few weeks, if we're honest. Yeah. Should I get reading? We can be in Christ and we therefore go. we are... No, I'm... Never mind. Anyway. I'm going to do the reading and try and save this. If you want to get that sorted, come to SPTC. <laughs> anyway, right. So this is Luke 24, um, starting at verse 36. Jesus appears to the disciples. While they were still talking about this, that's Jesus appearing... The reports of his the resurrection. The reports of his resurrection. Um, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your mind? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I, myself. Touch me and see a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he said, had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still, still, still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you when I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them this is what's written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. There you go. Oh no, let's carry on. Let's do the last few. The last few verses? Yeah, 15? might as well. Okay, the last bit, the ascension of Jesus. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Oh man. Oh man. man. Well, we're going to kick in straight with a question. And this is your first question. What is the first thing that you're going to do when this MCO is over? <laughs> Discuss amongst yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> 
So the reason I ask that is partly loads of people have been asking, where are you going to go or who do you want to see? Mm. Um, but Jesus has just returned from the greatest movement control order ever. <laughs> he's uh, risen from the grave. And it's really key that the first okay. thing he does is he comes to see his friends. Like uh, at the end of this passage, we finish with the ascension where Jesus returns to his father. But before he goes to the father, whom he has been separated from, he goes to see his disciples. He prioritizes his friends. His friends. Like he, he doesn't send an angel. He <laughs> doesn't send a message. He comes himself. I'm sure he wanted to go and see his father in heaven and be with him and return to him. But before that, he comes and reassures his friends. Yeah. Uh, and I think this is a key thing that this isn't just about stuff that he wants you to do for him. This is that he wants you to have a relationship with him. He comes himself and he stood amongst them. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, this thing was trending on Twitter today. I Using only this. four words, write the happiest story that you can think of. She uh, brought me cake. Oh, yeah. Uh, and there she was. <laughs> uh, they all left early. If you're an introvert, you love that. Uh, he opened his eyes. I like this one. Pin accepted. Remove card. <laughs> um, well, I'd suggest that possibly the f- best, happiest story that you could start. Forward story. Forward story is this. Mm. Peace be with you. Jesus starts the story of the resurrection with his disciples with these words, peace be with you. Now, why is that so important? Well, I don't know if you've ever like let somebody down and then you see them for the first time and it's that like, awkward small talk like oh gosh like, we, all, we all know this wasn't great what do I say? where do we go from here let's start again uh, and jesus doesn't want the small talk and he just comes and says peace be with you look guys covers it all i know i predicted you're gonna let me down you did it, like, it, peace be with peace you peace be with you peace be with you very good uh, and the resurrection of jesus changes everything uh, it's been said it means that there is no area of your life that you can legitimately look at without hope it doesn't matter what you've done or what's been done to you you can have hope and because of that hope we can have peace Uh, and um, it's just amazing because they're not in a peaceful place Uh, they were startled and frightened Mm -hmm. thinking they saw a ghost Uh, and what we're going to see in the rest of this passage is the ways that we can know that we can have peace and they all begin with p because it's just neat and tidy tidy. Um, (laughs) the first is his presence with us if you want a four word story I, I am, am with you. you. I am with you this, is the four word story. This is going to be a story. thing, isn't it? Yeah, that, yeah, P's and four word stories. Nice. Um, they were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said, why are you troubled? And why did doubts rise in your mind? Look at my hands and feet. It's I myself. Touch me and see a ghost as not a flesh and bones as you see I have. Then again, he says, when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. He's like, look. look, he's like, look. <laughs> uh, and this is really key. It's We get to examine the evidence. It's been said that following Jesus is not a leap of faith, but a step of faith based, based on, on evidence. evidence. Like the, the Christian tradition has always said the resurrection is not just a nice idea. It's not just he's risen in my heart. It's a, it's a historical event. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's really worth exploring that. Again, Alpha begins this Wednesday. If you've never explored it, come along. But also, uh, if you want to go deeper before them by yourselves, two great places. Lee Strobel uh, has written extensively on this and Bishop N.T. Wright. Uh, really, the, the, the argument comes down to, you know, his absence from the tomb, his presence with the disciples, the immediate impact on the disciples and the church and the experience throughout the ages. But it's really worth spending some time examining his hands and his feet, looking at his hands and feet and saying, is the resurrection real? Because if it's not, Paul writes to us and says, this is all meaningless if that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Jesus isn't raised from the dead. It spent some time uh, investigating the evidence. Um, They still did not believe, we're we're told, because (laughs) of joy and amazement is like, this is too good to be true. (laughs) I mean, it's again, it's encouraging that they struggle. And so Jesus says, they struggle and they were there. They're like, do you (laughs) have anything to eat? And then he eats some fish in front of them. Uh, And uh, it's um, a friend of ours James Odgers came to faith as he read this because he was like well ghosts don't eat like Mm -hmm. even hungry ghosts don't actually eat the food like uh, but Jesus (laughs) ate food in their presence a sign of his presence with us now the first uh, uh, like question kind of based out this passage I want to ask is this what peace no what (laughs) Mm. screw up the question what areas of your life do you need peace now and the reason I we ask that is because it's really good to name things. Mm. It's really good to name things uh, in prayer. So often people come to Jesus and he's like, what do you want? 
Yeah. And sometimes it's very clear what they want and what they need, <laughs> but he still asks them because there's something about being honest to God in prayer. Mm. But there's also something helpful for us. I was reading this week uh, that when you don't know what to do, your body gets prepared for anything that it might need to do. Um, and the way it does that is it releases cortisol, which is uh, the kind of gets your body ready to like jump out of the way of a moving bus. But as we're indoors, that's not very helpful no. uh, because there should be no moving buses in <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and that's what sort of what what um, stress uh, can uh, stress can come out of that mm. in a sort of unhelpful way. Your body responding in a way that's not particularly helpful for the scenario we're that in. You're in. And, and one of the first steps to kind of preventing this is to kind of work out well what it is that I need to do. Uh, it's why planning is good for us. Mm. It's why voicing things out is really good for us. And so this question is really helpful because when you answer the question, what area do you need peace in? It takes all of the world's problems and possible problems and shrinks them down to actually just what's the problem you're facing today. Uh, And the good thing about that is Jesus promises you the grace that you need for today. Mm. Uh, And so it helps us focus on actually what do we need to do today? And thank you, Lord, that you're going to give me the grace for today. Uh, And so what I'd love you to do is just voice out those areas. might just be Mm. one word. You can use the chat function or speak it out loud. And then, so what areas do you need peace in now? And then just maybe... uh, Leave space. Yeah, or maybe the connect group leader why don't you then just invite mm. god yeah, into, into those areas those up locked rooms as he mm. does here because jesus wants to appear so where do you need peace now Great. So Jesus brings peace and he does it by being present with his disciples. Uh, But then also he brings peace because he brings pardon for our sins. My four word story for that is you are totally forgiven. Nice. Quite like that. And it's really interesting because uh, the first thing he kind of does after saying like eating some food, like is he is he shows them He does a little Bible study and he shows them that they are forgiven. And that kind of follows the Lord's Prayer. We ask for daily bread and then we ask for forgiveness for our sins. It's stomach before eternal needs, which is a bit weird, but maybe he knows we're not able to listen when we're hungry. I don't know. Absolutely, he'll know that. Yeah, your sort of, your alternate character comes out. Uh, He says this to them. That was loaded. (laughs) <laughs> no, that's only because we used to have that joke that like, did anyone watch Heroes back in like the back 2000s the and they had al- alternate characters? Like, like I have Alter another Ego. character, you have a Jessica. When so, I'm hungry, Jessica comes out. Yeah, very nice <laughs> reference. But, very okay, nice. so Jesus does a Bible study. He yes. says, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. That's why it's good to read the whole Bible. And uh, he says this, then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, all nations. beginning at Jerusalem. So and this good. is basically the, the most concise sermon ever. Like forget the Bible in one year. This is the Bible in one minute. On this. this is the Bible in one minute. He summarizes <laughs> the entire Old Testament in one sentence. The Messiah will suffer. He will rise from the dead on the third day. Repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And even he does the whole book of Acts. Proclaimed to all the nations. <laughs> so like, you know, this is, we want to be concise. And um, this kind of, he makes understanding the scriptures a priority. And I was trying to think about why is he does it. And it's because... He wants them to have a confidence that this is what they should have expected. He he wants their faith to be sustainable. So once they leave, they have a place to find sustenance. He wants clarity. When you hear somebody's words, it helps you understand who they are. And also, Jesus wants us to know him and he makes himself known through the word. Um, and really, that's why we want to encourage you to get into the scriptures and mm. find a way that works for you to feed on them daily. They're not supposed to be a once a month feast. It's supposed to be <laughs> daily bread. And um, and it's so that we will know that we're forgiven, because one of the things that we learn as we read the Bible is that we're very forgetful and we need a daily reminder that we are forgiven. And he loved. has done it mm. and we are loved and he likes mm. us and we have pardon for our sins. You are totally forgiven. And, and so. Um, um, our third question is around scripture. So scripture's key. 
for our growth as disciples. So we want you guys to like share with each other your scripture wins. What are the things that you do when you're like, if you, how do you read your Bible that's like a total win? Let's just like share the things that are working, help each other out. Have you got any? Well, it's also good to share where you're not winning. Oh, what are yeah. the things that just don't, don't work. work for you? And that's okay. Because that's really helpful to call yeah, that out and that just say, helpful. you might just be not a morning person, mm. but you come awake at 11pm. <laughs> like, I, I, obviously we don't just go with our, our, our natural tendencies, but it's worth voicing those out. Mm. So I think for me, one thing I find is every day I try and do two things. I try and do like a big picture and I do the Bible in one year for that. So um, as I'm feeding the girls in the morning, I just put the audio on and I just kind of listen to it. Um, it's like, and what that's good is it gives you the big picture of the Bible every year. You're not taking everything in. And if I miss a day, that's fine. I don't go back. You just go on to the next day. Don't worry, you'll get it next year. And so that's the big picture. And then I try and find something that I just geek out a little bit on and just read a little bit. He and loves I find, getting geeky. Yeah, I find that big picture and the small focus is really yeah, helpful. Yeah, your big picture, small focus. And, and sometimes I find that where people struggle is because they're reading sort of a medium amount that doesn't give you enough to give you a big picture mm. but also is too much that you can actually that think about. You can't meditate it. on it. Um, yeah. I think what's most helpful for me is I love like listening to Bible in one year in the morning when I'm getting ready to sort of set up the day but then also making sure that I read the, the scripture in, in a tangible Bible. I'm just quite physical in that way so I like hipster. I like to do hipster in that way in my dungarees I like to like hold the paper you know and that helps me but again there's no right or wrong ways it's just like all these tips might be helpful new ways to you know um, interact with the word of God so what works for you what doesn't work for you uh, let's share with Discuss. one another Okay, great. So, having given us his presence and a pardon for sins, uh, we then get three other Ps. And if you like, if above what is Any what P's. Jesus has done, this is now what we do in response. Now, I couldn't come up with a four-word story. I had, they lived happily ever after, and that's just plain wrong. If you say wrong. ever after, really quick. No, no, I think it is one word. <laughs> is it not? Is it two words? Either way, it's wrong. They don't live happily ever after. It's quite hard. Uh, And we'll see why it's important. Or the adventure began, but that's only three words. It was only the start. That's five words. And they were off, but they're not off because they have to stay, as we see. And they waited, but that doesn't... Anyway, you can come up with your own (laughs) four-word story. But we get three other Ps uh, that bring us peace. First of all, we get a purpose for our lives. We hear about his promise Promise. for our lives. And we hear that he's going to give us power. power. So this is what's key. He says this to them. You are witnesses of these things. And really, that's the purpose of our lives. One of the purposes of our lives is to witness to what Jesus has done for us. Now, the great thing is here is he doesn't say you've all got to be evangelists. He says you're going to be witnesses. Now, the evangelist amongst us is that person who's able to just win people over. They're able to make the... um, It's the portable priest who is all over, like trended on the internet at the minute. You know, just wins people over. Yeah, it's like your dad. He's best friends with anyone. able to speak about Jesus Jesus and people want to hear it. And able to explain it. Now, Mm. obviously it's all good that we develop those skills, but some people are more natural than others. But we're all called to be witnesses. So Peter was an evangelist. Andrew, his brother, was a witness. He just said come and see um, now the great is thing is what is so good about Alpha by yeah the way. just come and see just come and see that's and say, us being witnesses see. if you find it hard to talk to people about Jesus you can say come on Alpha now the great come thing about a witness is they don't necessarily need to be an expert in fact in court a judge does not want a witness to give their analysis <laughs> he just wants to know what they saw mm. uh, it's like uh, a witness shares what they have seen what they've heard and what they experienced in their life I love that as well though because also I found in my life like talking about Jesus the most easy times to do that is just saying not necessarily people don't want to feel preached at but people don't mind hearing what your experience was when I experienced the Holy Spirit for the first time or 
what how God's moved in my life. When it's personal, people are quite happy, I find, to listen. So then he gives us his promise. I'm going to send you what my father has promised. Uh, what's he promised? He's promised to give us the Holy Spirit. And he says, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Stay put. Stay in the city, <laughs> the original MCO. And uh, he. And the thing is, some people ignore this. Uh, they then go off. We hear that there's some disciples who go on this road to somewhere else, to Emmaus. And uh, they think that they've got, we've got Jesus' teaching. We've got a great testimony. And they think that's enough. And Jesus says, that's not enough. Mm-hmm. You need his Holy Spirit living in you, who's going to give you the power to do this. And um, it's pretty amazing because the next thing we read is that he leaves. This is why we need his power, because he left. Like, let's be honest, most leaders struggle to let go of power. Most leaders struggle to make space for others. But Jesus actually left. He's not a micromanager. He gives us his spirit. He gives us the the power of self-control, one of the fruit of the spirit. He's the ultimate delegator. (laughs) And he says, you're going to do this but you're going to need my help. So he says, pray that the Holy Spirit would fill you. It's why every service we make space to receive the Holy Spirit afresh. Uh, And I want to finish. So when I was ordained uh, as part of the service, they ask you to make these vows. And then at the end of it, they say this to you, which is basically, look, you can't do this in your own strength. So ask (laughs) the Holy Spirit to help you. And so what I thought would be a great way, and also this kind of sums up some of uh, uh, the other promises in this passage. So I'm just going to read this to us. And then uh, Kate's then going to pray for us all to be filled with the Holy Spirit afresh. They say this uh, uh, to those getting ordained, uh, but really it's it's, uh, something all of us in our every, all aspects of our lives need to hear. You cannot bear the weight of this calling in your own strength, but only by the grace and power of God. Pray therefore that your heart may daily be enlarged and that your understanding of the scriptures enlightened. Pray earnestly for the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, come Holy Spirit. We pray that you'd fill every single person listening, watching this now, wherever they are. We ask that you'd fill their homes, the room, the seat where they are sat, their hearts with your love and with your power and with your presence to anoint them, to fulfill your purpose for their lives and also have peace Mm. in this time and know your nearness in the loneliness of this season. Come Holy Spirit.